These critters are going to get pretty wild out there, so get ready to brawl over some trees with a new one from Rare Mind Games. Good old Tubby. Prairie Dog Tubby. Hey, this is the McGuire Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at Critter Combat. Now, this is a new one that is out on Kickstarter right now, so they are live on Kickstarter. You'll find those details in the comments below. I do suggest you go check it out. It's at a fairly low price point, and it's a pretty cool game. Now, this one comes to us from Rare Mind Games. It's a 2-4 to four player game. 20 to 60 minutes on this one and 8 plus. This is definitely designed for the younger crowd, but it's great for adults too. I've had a good time playing this game. So let's do a quick run through the components here, and then we'll take a look at what gameplay looks like for this particular card game. So we'll start right off the bat here. They do include a small little rule book, and it's not too long. We got 11 pages here. you through all the basic mechanics of the game. It's a very, very simple game. There is included four reference cards. I've got one of them right here. And the back and the front is the same, and it lists out basically the actions that you're going to take as a player on your turn. So that's what you'll find here on the Critter Combat reference card. And then you'll notice Notice there is one deck here and this is the habitat deck so when you're playing this game you're basically battling over these tree points and once you get 12 tree points or more the first player to get that would then be the winner so if we look at this habitat card here and you'll see that you know half the card is is right side up and and half the card is is upside down and that's just so when the card is laying down you know players around the table can both see those points that are on the card. So what you'll find is right down here on the corners of the card are actually your habitat points. That's going to be how many points you're going to need to accumulate to acquire this habitat card. So for this one is eight. So we got an eight right here. We got an eight right here. You'll notice that there's some numbers in this inside part, and we'll have some nice pictures up close here at the end. And those are the tree points. So whenever you see the little leaf in the middle, it, it does say right on it trees. This one is worth five points, so five tree points. So if you were able to capture this card, you'd have five tree points towards your potential 12 to win the game. The next thing you're going to notice is these decks out here, and this is what makes this battle card game so much fun. There are four different types of combat decks, and each one of them has a completely different feel. So I'll go ahead and take a look here at the yellow, and the yellows are called the Backyard Brawlers. The blue is the Pond Punishers. The green is the Woodland Warriors, and the red, which is my favorite deck, is the Field Agents. And each one of the characters and the artwork on these decks have a little bit of a different feel, which I actually really like. I think it works very well in this one to have those art styles be a little bit different. Two of these decks have artwork by the Pixel Buster, and two of them have artwork by the designer, Robert Avona. So if we get in these decks, and I'm going to use the red, which is my favorite for our example here. There's quite a few different types of characters that you'll find, and I'll show you here, uh, just as an example, uh, some of the artwork and some of the different characters. Each one of these cards is going to be a little bit different, and it's fun because within the battle deck, you not only have your particular uh, battle unit, but there's various different classes that are built in here. So, for instance, we've got infantry, we've got heavies, medics, there's spies, officers. You're going to get various different types of classes within each one of these battle decks that you'll get to use. These cards also have abilities on them, and there's various different types of abilities. There's temporary abilities, there's permanent abilities, and there's battle abilities. And those battle abilities are going to come into play when you actually go into combat with another player, which you can do in this game, and we'll explain that here in a second. So let's take a look here at Jax the Wolverine. And he is an infantry unit, and he is worth two habitat combat points. You can see that right up at the top of that card. And that's going to come into play when you're trying to capture these habitat cards. So remember that each one of the habitat cards have a point value that's up at the corners here. Those are the values that you're going to try to get and to acquire that habitat. Over the course of gameplay, you're going to be setting these cards down and trying to get up to, if I was trying to capture this one, eight points. And Jax here is worth two points. Jax also has an ability called No Titanium Claws, and that is a battle ability, and I'll read that to you here. It says, when played as a reinforcement, this card's 
battle point can be changed to match any one of your opponent's reinforcement cards. So you can see that each one of these cards do have a, an ability that's on them. I'll show you how those abilities play out here when we look a little bit more at gameplay. All right, let's play some Critter Combat. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your Habitat deck and you're going to shuffle that up. And there's not too many cards here, so it's a pretty quick, easy shuffle. I'm going to cut that and put it down on the table. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw two cards from that Habitat deck, and you'll set those out so all the players can get to them. And you want to put some space between the cards. That way you've got some room to be able to lay your combat cards down on top of them. The next thing we're going to do is the youngest player is going to be the first player, so they're going to start with selecting which one of the decks they want to play with, whether it's the, the yellow, blue, green, or red. And again, each one of these decks have a completely different feel, and that's important about this game. Even though you choose maybe the red and someone else chooses the blue, it's not like you just get different artwork, you also get different abilities that are only accessible inside of those decks. So that's one of the things that does give this game quite a bit of replayability and make it kind of fun because every time you play, if you play with a different color deck, you are kind of getting a different strategy, a different feel, your tactics are a little different in how you're going to play. You're going to get abilities that you wouldn't get in some of the other decks. I think that's another really cool aspect of this particular battle card game. Let's say we're playing a four-player game and all the players have now chose their decks. They're going to give those decks a shuffle and then what they're going to do is going to draw the top five cards of each one of their decks. So I've now got my five cards for each one of my players. And the first thing you're going to do when you start your turn is actually draw a card. So you've got your five that are in your hand, and your hand total can never go above eight. The end of your turn, that's the last step you're going to do, is actually discard down to your hand limit of eight if you happen to acquire more than that. But since it's the first round of the first game, I've got my five cards in my hand, and let's say I was the yellow player. First thing I would do is draw a card. The next thing I'm going to do is actually play a card. And there's three different things you can do when you play a card. One, you can look at your cards and you can play the ability that's right on the card. And that's generally going to be something that is either a permanent ability or a temporary ability. Again, those battle abilities are going to come into play when you actually go into combat with another player. Or if another player attacks you when it's their turn. So we'll talk more about that. One, we can use our ability. Two we can actually play the card right on a habitat. Let's say I wanted to play Squiggles the Chipmunk here. Squiggles is a heavy and has four, has four, comp, has four habitat points right up here in the corner. I could take Squiggles and say, well, you know, I've got a habitat out here worth eight points, and I've got a habitat out here worth nine points. Well, this habitat that's worth nine points is worth four tree points, and this habitat that's worth eight points to capture is worth three tree points. Well, you know what? I'm on my way to my 12 for the win, so I'm going to go for this card that's worth four tree points and takes nine points to capture. Well, one of those actions is you can play this card against that habitat, and you would simply just lay it down, and that would be your turn. That would be your action that you would be doing. And that four would count against the nine. Now, again, when it's another player's turn, they can lay cards down on that habitat as well. So you'll find that it's this really cool balance of... When do you take the card and play the ability? When you take the card and just lay it down on a habitat to try to get the points? Or when you do your third type of action, which is battle. Now again, you can only choose one of these three actions when you play a card. But when you battle, what you're going to do is actually attack another player's card that's already out. So let's say our yellow player went ahead and took their turn and went and said, you know what, I'm playing Swiggles here, playing Swiggles here. on uh, this card, four towards the nine, and then I'm going to look to see if I can resolve any habitat cards, which means I basically can claim those. Well, obviously, I can't yet, and then I'm going to make sure that I discard down to my hand limit. So let's say now the blue player was the next player, and they wanted to go. Again, first thing they're going to do is draw a card from their deck. They're going to look at these cards, and then they're going to decide the same thing. Do I play an ability on my card? Do I put a card down on a habitat? Or do I battle another player? Let's say for this example, the Pawn Punishers wanted to battle the Backyard Brawlers character card that we have out here. So Squiggles, Squiggles is in for it. So we've got... Um, let's just take, let's take Mr. Quackers here, the Pawn Punishers has, and let's say, you know what, I'm going to battle Squiggles here. So you're going to put your card right down next to Squiggles, and really what you're trying to do is see if you can get Squiggles off of that habitat. 
So as the attacking player, I'm now then going to look at my cards here, and now I'm going to decide how many of these I want to put down secretly as reinforcements. And essentially what you're trying to do is outwit the other player, because when you're done and you look at all your cards, you're going to add up all those point totals on the cards with the card that you attacked with, as well as the cards that you're sending in for reinforcements highest point total is going to win that battle. Now the other trick to that is any of the cards that you play that have battle abilities on them, you're going to get to trigger that battle ability as well. So if it has a permanent ability or if it has a temporary ability, you're not going to get to trigger that, but you are going to get to trigger anything that has a battle ability. So I'm going to look through my cards here and I'm going to say, well, you know, I'm going to take this one and that one happens to have a battle ability, so I'll be able to use that. And I'm going to take these two. So I'm going to go in with three reinforcement cards. And I'm going to keep them down there. And then right when I take my finger off that, they're locked in. And now my friend here, which is now the defender, is going to look at their cards. And they're going to be able to put down the same type of thing. So they're going to look through and they're going to say, you know what? Um, I don't really have any battle abilities that are available to me. But I do have a few cards here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, take, uh, I'm going to take these two cards. I'm just going to take two of them. And I'm going to put those down, and now they're locked in. Now, simultaneously, we're going to turn over, and we're going to see that we had Squiggles already for four, and they played a heavy rabbit, and they played a heavy uh, kitten, which is mittens, which gives us four times three, which is 12 points. And there is no battle ability, so we don't get to use that, but that's a pretty high point value to defend. And now our blue player is going to say, well, I attacked with a point value of three, here is uh, two more, so now we're up to five. Three more, now we're up to eight. And five more, now we're at the 13. The attacker did win by one point, 13 beats 12. But one of my cards here that I played, which was my frog, did have a battle ability, so I am able to activate that as well. And it says, when played as a reinforcement, your opponent now has one less battle point. So my opponent now, instead of having 12, would have 11. I still have my 13, and I win the battle. If I win the battle, what happens is the person that got attacked that lost, their cards would go away, and they would go into their discard pile, and my cards would stay on the habitat. It is still technically the Pawn Punisher's turn, and I was on the second phase of the round, which is the, the Play a Soldier card. And I decided to do a battle. I'm now going to move into that third phase, which is Resolve Habitat cards. So I can look at this Habitat card, and it has nine points. And I obviously now have more than nine points. So at this point, I can go ahead and take my cards off. Those cards are going to go into the discard pile, and I can claim that Habitat card. So I now have four tree points towards my 12 to win the game. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that I don't have eight cards in my hand. I do not because I played quite a few of them in that battle. I only have two. Now you may have the question of, well, what happens if you run out of cards? Upon every turn, you're going to be able to draw one card. So you're always going to have just that one card in your hand. If you run out of cards, you're going to shuffle your discard pile, have a friend cut that deck for you, and then you'll be able to have more cards to draw. But one of the extra things that you can do when you play a card, every card in your deck that's marked infantry has one extra special ability, and that's called a global ability. You can take an infantry card, and that's marked right on the card where that class is marked right up top, and you can play that, and it has a generic ability which will allow you to just draw two cards from your deck. So when you get in those situations that you end up using a lot of cards to do a combat battle, you more than likely for the next turn or two are going to want to just play infantry cards and build that hand of cards up again. Every time it's your turn, you do have a few things to think about. And that's great for kids because it's building those strategy skills, those tactic skills on the fly. Every time it's your turn, is it a better strategy for me to just go ahead and just lay a card down on a habitat because I want to build up points to try to acquire that habitat card? Or should I battle someone else and get their points off of the habitat, making it a little bit longer of a game, but giving me maybe a better positioning near the end of that game? Or do I want to do neither one of those things and play one of the abilities on my card? Like this permanent ability from Ollie of the Pawn Punishers. When played for occupation on a habitat card, you may send an opponent's card on that habitat back to their hand. 
So you could just play Ollie's ability, discard that, grab a card from one of your opponents, and just say, you know what? Back to your hand, off the habitat. And that might be a card that might be a high point value that uh, you know they let out. Now it doesn't go to their discard pile, it goes back to their hand, but still it's off of the habitat, allowing you to maybe get that tree first before they do. Now the last thing is, as those habitat cards are acquired, you are going to flip the deck and replace it. So you're always going to have those two habitat cards that are out on the table that people are battling over. That's Critter Combat. Again, this is on Kickstarter right now. I definitely recommend you go out, check it out, back the game, get you a copy. You won't be sorry. It's a great game for kids. You'll have a lot of fun with it. And, you know, as an adult, I've had a lot of fun with this game as well. There are quite a few decisions to make as you go through with the gameplay. So I think it keeps it fresh. It isn't like one of those kid games where, you know, you'll, you only can do option A or option B. And it's just every turn, it's just like spin a wheel, move, 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 move. This is much more than that. You've got some decisions that you're going to make. The characters are fun. The artwork is fun. I love the classes that are built in. It's just a cool game all the way around. So I definitely recommend it. So click that like, hit the subscribe below to join the team, ring the bell. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.